So I did a couple kids YouTube videos. I thought maybe for once I would do a couple videos just catering to my younger audience just a little bit because I do have a large fan base of young people as well. So, I was right. In May of 2020, I released a video on Stevie T, and in December of that same year, I released a follow-up. Even did an interview with his agent slash manager, Tony Kapaki, which is now aged about as well as milk. But out of all the points I made in those videos, the most commonly argued against was that Stevie T, at least in some videos, targeted a young audience. In some cases, a very young audience. Well, now it's indisputable, with an admission from the man himself catering to my younger audience just a little bit because I do have a large fan base of young people as well. But I do wonder how he built that audience. You don't get an audience like that overnight, and not for no reason either. In other words, the videos that he admits cater to that audience are just the tip of the iceberg. He knew that there was a pre-existing audience of young people watching before he made the videos he admits to. And those young people, how old would they be? Well, Steve seems to think that they're learn your ABCs age. Now, if you're interested in how he may have cultivated this audience, the previous videos may be worth a watch. But in this video, I'm just going to cover the last seven or so months. And it all starts with this video. Blippi writes a metal song. Hi everyone, I'm child entertainer Blippi. Who or what is Blippi, you might ask? Well, he's a children's entertainer or more so a character as it's been played by multiple different actors and has cartoons that are on Netflix, Amazon Prime and YouTube. The target audience? Toddlers and children up to the age of about five. Now Blippi started in 2014, meaning that the absolute oldest a Blippi viewer would be from that demographic now would be 13 kind of wipes away the whole argument that Steve's videos are appealing to nostalgia. So then there's parody, and of course that's a valid reason, but I do have to ask, who's the target audience here? Because other than children, the only other viewers who would even know who or what Blippi is are the parents, and just how many parents are watching Blippi parodies in their free time? 900,000? I'm not exactly convinced. And with a plethora of comments like, you're not Blippi, uh, I'm even less so convinced. Now I could argue this myself, but when life gives you lemons, I think a Facebook comment thread between Steve's mom, a character on his YouTube channel, Mama T, and a, another Terry Berry family member put it best. Now I've censored the names and profile pictures, but Mama T is in blue and the other Terry Berry relative is in red. Absolutely love this. Blippi, you have some competition. I love these ones because it will pop up in a playlist for children whose parents let them watch a Blippi playlist on YouTube. OMG is that a good thing? LOL. When my kids were little, and watching the Wiggles, Steve would pop up all the time. LOL. Funny, I remember saying something very similar. But moving on, how do you target an audience on YouTube? Well, metadata is quite important. You've obviously got the thumbnail and title, those are important. You've got the description, and that's important too, you can get some keywords in. But then the bit that the general public don't see is the tags. These help to determine what type of audience sees your video. For example, if I was making a video about a guitar pedal, my tags would consist of the type of effect, the brand, the type of pedal itself, and other things that I think the audience that would be interested in this type of video would search. Now using third-party software, we can see what tags Steve is using in each video. Let's take this video, for example. And we'll play a game for you at home. I'm gonna read out some of the tags that Steve has used here, and I want you to tell me what type of audience you think he's going for. Kids. Cartoons. Cartoon. Kids cartoons. Kid. Kids shows. Cartoons for kids. Kid shows. For kids. Children's shows. Kids videos for kids. Children cartoon. Children. Kids videos. Kids show. Kid videos. Kid cartoons. So, anyone think it's old age pensioners? Make no mistake, the tags got this video where it was intended to be. One day after it was uploaded, I searched the last tag that Steve put in. Kid cartoons. And I did this on a private tab with no cookies enabled, meaning that it was a clean search that was not tailored to any preference. And I got exactly what you would expect when you search kid cartoons. I got kid cartoons. Paw Patrol, Blippi, Peppa Pig, 
Curious George. These are all kids' videos. Very clearly the case. And then we get... It might be apt to quote a children's show in this case and say, one of these things is not like the other. And then there's wonders as to why it got 4.7 million views and it was his best performing video in the last two years. Kids. Now I've said it before and I'll say it again. If you want to create kids content, that's absolutely fine. I've even gone so far as to say that Stevie T or the character that Stevie T portrays would be a good children's entertainer. But come on, it doesn't get more apparent than kids videos for kids in your tags, does it? Which again is absolutely fine until your next video is you dressing up as Blippi again, but this time even you feel the need to expressly state that this video should not be viewed by kids. The following video is not meant to be taken as child entertainment. This video is a parody. Now that's probably due to the graphic nature of the video, but credit where credit is due, he did put the disclaimer there. But then three uploads later, he's uploading ABC Song for Kids Silly Version. Hi everyone, I'm singing the alphabet song. You know what song that is? A is for apple, a, 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 apple. B is for ball, b, 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 ball. A video made specifically for kids. You're sending some seriously mixed messages here and that only continues. It's just reckless. And one point I made previously, which sadly is still relevant here, is that YouTube videos that are made for kids, they don't allow comments. And the reason why is because YouTube had a problem with predators going to videos that were tailored to kids and, well, going after kids. Now Steve's nursery rhymes are set to no comments, but we are fully aware of videos that very clearly target a similar audience, which have full comments on. And as our Terry Berry relative says, That will pop up in a playlist for children whose parents let them watch a blippy playlist on YouTube. If that was the case, Steve's videos would be the only blippy videos that have comments enabled. And as I've stated previously, it's pretty easy to spot the little kids in those comments. And as he said, he's got a large audience of young people, the young people in question being very young. And the problem is, just about every YouTuber I know, including myself, and Stevie T for that matter, has faced the same scam bots, impersonating them to scam the audience, and that's just for scamming money. It wouldn't take much for someone with more sinister motives to impersonate someone like Blippi on the only Blippi videos with comments enabled and contact those kids. And in case you still think Steve is unaware of what audience watches those videos, the reason that he has the Blippi costume is that his very young nieces wanted him to dress up as Blippi for Halloween. And the Learn Your ABC's Silly Song video, which he's open about being for kids, he put Blippi in the tags. Now I think the point is pretty simple. If you want to make, as covered in my previous videos, content featuring adult actresses, that's fine. The tags are pretty obvious as to who the intended audience is. And if you want to make videos that are sponsored by adult toy shops... Things are getting pretty stale in the bedroom. So my sponsors, adamandeve.com, are offering you this. 50% off one item in the store. See, this looks like fun. Sure, okay. And if you want to make kids' videos, teaching ABCs and animal sounds, sure, that's great. These are the sounds that animals make. But make no mistake, the Venn diagrams of those two different audiences, there's no crossover. They're about as far apart from each other as, as possible. And it's very simple to keep them apart. A simple YouTube kids' channel for the kids' content that you're making would suffice. And the thing is, it's not just me talking about this stuff anymore. I'd like to direct you to a Reddit post. It was a screen grab of two of his thumbnails, which were uploaded one week apart from each other, for, very clearly, very different audiences. The post is linked in the description, but I'm just going to show you the top comment. With close to 400 upvotes, there it is. And other comments are in a similar viewpoint. It's really not a good look when Apparently, hundreds of people think this of you based off what you're uploading and what you're mixing together. You're mixing things that really shouldn't be mixed. So hopefully this is my last DVT video. I don't enjoy making them. But uh, thank you for watching. See you next time. Bye bye. The media is tainting our children's minds.